We are not the 9.30 news. How many times do we have to keep repeating ourselves? Believing us is like believing Singapore is the driest place on earth. Contrary to popular belief, any similarities to actual people, events and pets are purely coincidental. And now, the news. The headlines. Get ready for a rough ride at Singapore's third integrated resort in Geylang. The government introduces a new measure to bring down the divorce rate. And Sentosa may soon be a separate country. Hello and welcome to another edition of The News. I am BBC. And I'm Adriana. Wow, 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 wow. Is that the echo I hear coming from that empty space between your ears? Huh? Topping the news today is the announcement that a third integrated resort will be built in Singapore. Compared to the other two existing high-end IRs, the new integrated resort is being marketed as the IR for the rest of us. Andre Chichak with a scoop. First, there was Resorts World Sentosa, then Marina Bay Sands, and very soon, Geelong will also have a world-class attraction. A private consortium held a press conference today to announce upcoming plans to revamp their underground casino. We are not a casino. We are integrated resort. Geelong World Resort. We will build our own roller coaster. We will build our own theme park. Ah. They have Sky Garden. We have Beer Garden. You can sit there, watch soccer, drink beer, eat peanut. Very nice experience. And when finish eating the peanut, Just threw on the floor. So nice. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stop, 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 stop. Stop. According to the press release, visitors to the new Geelang World Resort can play the latest Avatar roller coaster ride. <laughs> And the casino will offer games like guess the number of remaining peanut shells. If that's not enough, players can also play poker with the newly hired dealers. Now they say the new Geelong World Resorts will boost the economy by providing more than 1,000 new jobs. Among the positions available are financial advisory and security positions. Come next year, many Singaporeans will be happy that they don't have to pay $100 to enter this new casino. And Geelang will have one more attraction to add to its other famous attractions. This is Andre Chichak, The News. Ooh, that Avatar ride looks so exciting and more durable than that roller coaster in Sentosa that's been kaput for more than three months now. Speaking of roller coasters, the government is introducing a new initiative that it hopes will help decrease the number of divorce cases in Singapore. What's marriage got to do with roller coasters? Well, you see... Never mind, dear. Here's Nita Goodwood with the story. The cooling-off period was first implemented for time-sharing and then on-block sales and then now the elections. The news has just learnt that the Ministry Without Portfolio will be implementing a 30-day cooling-off period for newly wedded couples too. After spending a million dollars on research, we have discovered that the number one cause for divorces is marriage. So one way to reduce divorces is to reduce marriage, correct or not? So if we can statistically reduce the rate of marriages and prevent them from happening, then statistically speaking, we can also reduce the rate of divorces. We can also go back in time 
to prevent the marriages from happening. But that will be a very expensive exercise. And we do not want to waste our taxpayers' money on such frivolous projects. So lower marriages means lower divorces. This is what we call attacking the problem at the root source. With one in four marriages ending in divorce in Singapore, the ministry will be implementing a 30-day cooling-off period in marriages, which means that once the honeymoon is over, couples will have up to 30 days to cool off and decide whether they want to stay married. 30-day cooling-off period. Good. Very good. I think the government should have implemented this earlier. Now I don't need to get divorced. I tell you, in my case, in the beginning, very good. Honeymoon. Whoa! <laughs> and then come back to Singapore. Mother-in-law. You know, this monster called the mother-in-law. Ask me every day, wake up at 5 a.m. Make porridge for the whole family. I think she watched too much Korean drama. She thinks she's the Korean mother-in-law. She even started to call me Kim. Crazy woman. We asked the minister what he had to say, and this is what he had to say. Yes, we agree. Mothers-in-laws is the number two cause of divorces in Singapore. We are looking into ways of reducing their numbers as well. Well, good luck to all the mothers-in-law out there. This is Nina Goodwood reporting for the news. Time now for a quick commercial break. Why do I always get that line? Because it's really short. But be sure to stay with us here on the news as we reveal why Sentosa could soon be an independent country. See you later. It's longer now. Welcome back to the news. If you have any feedback at all on the show, please don't hesitate to log on to Channel 5's Facebook page to say a few kind words. That's right. And we also want to do a shout out to Miss Tom Chiak for your kind letter. We're glad our fishbowl conspiracy story in an earlier episode brought some closure to you. You have also written, I have noticed that all char kway teow sellers give only three prawns. Is this another cartel in operation? We have initiated an investigation. Starting with our very own Media Core Canteen, and indeed we found that there were really only three prawns in the Char Kuei Tiao. We're definitely going to continue our investigations with the rest of the hawker centres in Singapore to see if there's really a prawn-fixing conspiracy going on. OK, moving along. Sentosa has long been Singapore's getaway island for people wanting to spend a day at the beach or simply watch their money disappear. But since the opening of high-end residences and the IR there, there has been a sharp spike in the wealth of the tiny island. And now a band of separatists is calling for the island to be made an independent country. Nida Goodwood reports... Don't eat it all. It's actually quite good. The first quarter estimates for the Sentosa IR are in, and their total income exceeds 10 African nations. So massive is their income that many wealthy residents of Sentosa and poor casino workers feel that they should be a separate country. And leading them on this path to independence is this man. My name is General Bolo Sentosa. Ignore this. This is one of my dead men's uniforms. We feel that all the foreign mainlanders, i.e. you, are sharing in our hard-earned money to prevent all these foreign mainlanders, i.e. you, from stealing our hard-earned money. I feel the only way is to declare independence. Inspired by the wave of separatist movements sweeping across the world, he wants the authorities here to accede to secede. General, we understand that you have informed the Singapore government that you will secede today at 12.18. Yes, it is a very auspicious time. 
According to top secret documents acquired by this reporter, General Sentosa has already made an application to the United Nations to be declared as a new country. At this moment, we cannot confirm or deny that an application has been made by the Republic of the Democratic State of Sentosa to become the 193rd nation. However, as the charge the affairs, I am more than happy to be in charge of their money. I mean, affairs. There has been a mixed response to this story. Constitutionally, this is not new or impossible. Back in the 50s, 1957 to be exact, Christmas Island also broke off from Singapore without any incident. As long as Republic of the Democratic State of Santosa doesn't have GRCs and they stick to the boundaries they propose, we are okay with the cessation. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of uh, Republic of Sentosa before. Uh, they, they, they say the people stay around here in uh, Tanjung Paga uh, can apply for PR because we are under the same uh, GRC. So, General, what will you do after 1218 should the authorities fail to meet your demands? You think only Singapore has weapons? We have more. We have cannons on Fort Siloso. Right. This is Nita Guiwood signing off from Sentosa. Correction. It is the Republic of the Democratic State of Sentosa. This is Nita Guiwood signing off from the Republic of the Democratic State of Sentosa. Sentosa. Right. Up next, we have Andre Chichak with this special report. She's one of Singapore's most well-known domestic helpers and has appeared on numerous television shows like The News and Black Rose. You could, I guess, call her a celebrity maid. I'm not sure if she has her own maid, but that's another story for another day. But the affable Letitia Bongnino is upset at being left out of another show on Channel 5, Buffetlicious. The News understands that she was originally penciled in to make a guest appearance on The Food Show, hosted by Michelle Chia and Silvio Retinel. But it seems the powers that be at Channel 5 dropped her at the last minute, choosing to invite Adriana Wow, one of the anchors of The News, instead. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. My name is Leticia and I am a maid. When the producer first called my mom to invite me on that show, you know, that one, the uh, Abu Peli shows. Leticia was very excited and very happy. And uh, the producer also told me that uh, the buffet that I would be going to is uh, Puranakan. Actually, Leticia liked to watch uh, the Nonia show, you know, that one, the... Uh, no, not the little Nonia, that one very boring. The other one with the Michelle Chong, the tomboy, that one. Uh, the, the sayang sayang. So, uh, actually, Leticia can cook uh, peranakan dishes like uh, itik tim, ayam buah keluwa, and also the babi pongte. So I was very excited to go on that show. Also, my mom very excited. She bought some Tupperware and tell me to tap out for her. And then two days ago, the producer called my mom and said, they don't want Leticia anymore. Then they asked that anchor on the news, that one, Adriana Cow or something, to go on that show instead. Everybody knows that Adriana Cow is very skinny, so she doesn't know anything about food or eating. So Leticia is very upset now. My mom is also very upset, you know, upset like this one. Can we stop for a while, please? Please stop for a while. <laughs> Network executives at Channel 5 have so far refused to shed any light on why Adriana was chosen over Letitia. The word on the grapevine is that they were worried about the show's image. Oh, oh image. Letitia know about image. That's why Letitia got these new pants. You see this one? Got the buckle. Uh, no, I didn't get from a Lucky Plaza. I got from uh, Orchard Ion. Yeah, it's a two-month salary. But um, 
actually, if they can get a singer to host a put show, why they cannot get like a maid to be a guest? My mom said to tell the producer to kiss my poet because why maids cannot go to buffets? If you cut me, do I not bleed? It don't cut me. Ah. So who is ultimately responsible for choosing these guests on Buffalicious? Well, definitely not us because we only come and makan and have a good time and then we also told what to say. Oops. Am I saying too much? Yes. Okay, you better ask Channel 5 about that. Or maybe the news can send someone down to do a report on behind the scenes on food show like us. Yeah. And maybe we will. This is Andre Chichak, The News. Time now for another short break. It's We Are Singaporean Time! Which country's currency has the same value as the money in Singapore? Uh, Brunei. How about Malaysia? Brunei. US. Pia. Brunei. US. Brunei. Malaysia. What was Sentosa previously known as? Sentosa. Pula Hantu. Pulau Belakang Mati. Pulau Temasek. Lion City. Pulau Mati. Pulau Tekong. Pulau Belakang Mati. Port Siloso. Malaysia, I'm not sure. Pulau Ubin. Singapore Island. Resort World. Up next, here's Jojo Joget with this story. The army has been constantly outsourcing jobs to private contractors. From the cookhouse to the rifle rangers, these jobs are no longer done by our army boys, but by private vendors. In a surprise move, MINDEF has also announced they will soon be outsourcing fighting as well. This was announced in a hastily called press conference, which incidentally was also outsourced. Attention! I will say this one time and one time only. Everything say here is a top secret and classified. You cannot report any of this. So don't anyhow say all. Oh. Private vendor interested to provide the manpower to do the fighting must fulfill the spec outline in this top secret document, which is classified and cannot be reported. So, like I say, don't anyhow say all. Oh. Mm. Mm. What is your name? Oh? My name is Jojo Joget. My name is Kim. You like a kimchi? I, 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 I prefer kwachi. Mm. Kimchi good? Kimchi good? Kimchi? Hmm? Mm -mm. Mm. Since the news is not the real news, here's the scoop. According to the tender specs, all interested vendors must have a paid up capital of $10 billion and must have fought in at least one major war. World War I does not count. We spoke to one potential vendor, Mr. Tan, who runs a multi-billion dollar cleaning company and already has a battalion of cleaners engaged in mopping up operations on a daily basis. We're working with MINDEF to, to allow work permit holders and S-PASS holders to be part of this fighting force. I already have 50,000 cleaners out there, willing to fight, to augment their 
migrant, um, meager incomes. Another criteria these companies must meet is that in any war they are involved in, they must win. Failure to do so will be a breach of contract and they will forfeit their $10 million performance deposit. We asked some of our full-time NS men what they think of this new outsourcing policy. Yay! 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 We seem to be getting some very positive feedback. This is Jojo Jogate reporting for the news. Hey, you think they outsource reserves also or not? All right, let's cross over now to John Lemon for the latest weather update. Uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> Ew. Uh, it's raining. It's really cold in here. I want to know, have you ever seen the rain? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Singapore. I'm John Lemon. Yeah, you might think I'm a Malay. I am not. I'm Caucasian. Half half Asian. Caucasian. <laughs> what do I know about the weather? Nothing. Mm -hmm. But having lived here all my life, you might as well flip a coin to see whether tomorrow's going to be hot, wet, or both. And you know what? You might still be wrong. Well, anyway, the Met Service says tomorrow's going to be heavy thunderstorm and heavy downpour. You might wake up tomorrow morning to see your car park turn into Tetare with cars floating around. <laughs> it's a good time to take a day off with your missus, of course. You know, in the words of Lulu, she says it's a good time to hey show, hey show. Well, reproduction is a good form of productivity. That's all from me, John Lemon. See you around, bro, sister, whatever you are. Here comes the rain again, falling on my head like a memory, falling on my head like a new emotion. He, he. Thanks, John. That was fascinating. All right. That wraps up this edition of the news. Be sure to tune in again next week for a few more stories before we go into hiding. And do check out our website for more news updates and useless information. Good night. <laughs> bye bye. Is that Timothy Ghost Jacket? Oh, no, it's just makeup. What shade is that again? Or R21. R21. That's the one that typically uses. Are you wearing his shorts too?